Back during the Great Baltimore Fire, Thomas O'Neill, who was a merchant and had a big store in downtown Baltimore, noticed that his store was going to be possibly burned down by the fire. And he went to church and he prayed. As the fire is coming toward his establishment, he asks the Carmelite sisters to pray. And uh, he rushes back. And sure enough, the winds have shifted. And the fire went eastward, avoiding his establishment, his department store. And he promised God that if his store was saved, that he would donate his wealth to the church. He died in 1919, and his wife died in 1936. They had no children. His store was saved from the fire. And when he passed away, his fortune went to the Archdiocese of Baltimore with the following two caveats. One was that a cathedral, a new cathedral, be built in Baltimore. And the second, that a Catholic hospital to serve all those that are poor and indigent be founded as well. And both of these are living legacies of Thomas O'Neill. We have to this day the Thomas O'Neill Foundation, which provides an awful lot of help to an awful lot of people. What he established as the result of his will, he really did not want recognition. He did not want his name on the hospital. So it's Monday, November 18th, 1968, and the very first patient is brought to Good Samaritan Hospital via ambulance with a hip fracture. The media was actually present that day, reveling over this new $15 million, 284 bed facility. Everybody was extremely excited, extremely excited, because no one that was there had ever had the opportunity to open up a brand new hospital and to do the preparation and all. And the preparation was, was just absolutely marvelous. The education and the camaraderie. I was 26 when I started at Good Samaritan Hospital. <laughs> I surely was skinny compared to now. <laughs> When the first patient arrived, the stretcher came down the hallway, and of course everybody, all of the staff and all, were looking, you know, to see what was going on. Uh, we went into his room, got him into bed and all, and um, everybody greeted him. I'm sure he felt like a rock star. Double shooting. Murder. Two men were shot overnight with violence. The parable of the Good Samaritan in the Bible is that of a traveler on the road to Jerusalem. A dangerous road. Who gets waylaid. They beat him up. By thieves. They left him half dead. Beaten, robbed, stripped naked, and left for dead on the you road. You get the sense that his life was hanging in the balance. And as he's laying there suffering, several other travelers ignore him. But the Samaritan. He decides to care for this person. He's brought in to safety. A person not of that region stops, cares for him, binds his wounds. He bandages him. And carries him into Jerusalem for further care. What he sees is somebody who is in need. That's what a Samaritan is. A Samaritan is who meets the need with no other strings attached. The parable of the Good Samaritan and what it shows plays out every day at Good Samaritan Hospital. and it plays out in the William Wheedleton story from the 1970s. William Wheedleton was a 21-year-old young man who became a paraplegic because he was shot. He left the first facility that he was in because they felt they couldn't do anything more for him. And there were two facilities in the state that could have taken him, Montebello and Deer's Head down on the eastern shore and both refused to take him because he had had some behavioral problems. Willie was on one of the mobilized stretchers on his stomach, and this doctor came in and clapped him on the back. Hey, Will! And Will came up swinging. He ordered him put out on the ground. 
No wheelchair, nothing. And the next morning, I called Baldwin Sun newspaper. Two days later, it was front page newspaper. And Dr. Arthur Stevens called me. And he said, I want your son. Dr. Stevens loved his patients, and they knew that he loved them. He was an icon nationally of rehabilitation medicine. He was concerned for the whole patient. The injury, that whatever it was, had a physical component, but it also had a very deep psychological component to it. He dealt with the whole package. We loved that man to death. Nobody had made an effort to rehab him until we got Dr. Friedman. That Good Samaritan, that's right. That Good Samaritan Hospital was the only effort to rehab him. And that's why Good Sam Hospital is so aptly named, uh, because it is that place of care and refuge and healing and comfort to those who experience illness and distress and trouble along life's journey. And it's been doing this magnificently for 50 years. I think that as we sit here at this 50th year milestone for MedStar Good Samaritan Hospital, it's important that we remember where we came from, who we are, what we do, who we serve, and how much it means to us. The hospital opened in 68, 1968, and my overwhelming impression was it was empty. It was a 240-bed hospital with maybe 35 patients in it. So it was a beehive of inactivity. In the 70s, the early 70s, we went through some financial difficulties and we went through some political difficulties and then Jim Oakey came in 74 and stabilized everything. Jim Oakey as a leader was a phenomenal leader. He had to be to be able to get that place turned around from being a rehab facility into a general hospital. He could be a character, don't get me wrong, but um, he always had the patient interest at the forefront of anything that he did, and he never forgot the staff. The success of the hospital and growth of the hospital, success, definitely, growth, definitely, quality, definitely, I attribute to our leadership, which was Jim Oakey, Pat Smythe. She was a spitfire. She was, she was a straight shooter. She was a wonderful person um, and great, but she didn't take any BS from anybody. Mom is a type A personality. Jim was a type A personality, and they clicked as a team. As a volunteer leader and as a professional leader, the hospital grew exponentially under Jim's guidance and under Mom's leadership on the board. The result was that Good Samaritan Hospital was ranked in the top 30 nationally. I have a great respect for this hospital. I've seen what it's done, it's a great tradition. I am in this hospital every week, and I visit patients every week. More often than not, I'm getting praises for the quality of care in this hospital. And it comes unsolicited. At Good Samaritan Hospital, Catholic identity is a cornerstone of our culture of care. We very much believe in it. And the word Catholic basically encompasses all faiths, all creeds, all races. We care for everyone. Coming to MedStar Good Samaritan Hospital was an interesting experience for me because I knew it was a Catholic hospital. I'm Jewish. I wasn't sure what my place was going to be in this hospital, but I rapidly came to see that all faiths are represented. In fact, I believe MedStar Good Samaritan Hospital may be the only place in the country, if not the world, where a Catholic hospital has a specifically Jewish prayer room. This is a place where 
Faith is important, where every morning is started with a prayer read by different members of the faith community representing all faiths. Our days here end with a prayer. There are services available through the day. Five decades of devoted, compassionate, faith-based uh, medical care that is a mainstay in our community. I want to pray with you that the next 50 years will be even better. Happy anniversary as we continue on the path of the Good Samaritan.